In the U.S., the thing that's been alarming about this is that we've suddenly seen an outbreak in cows. That's new. We've never seen this species infected before. So um, for the last few months, uh, increasingly, we're seeing more herds um, with evidence that there's bird flu in their milk. Um, and, you know, the worry, of course, is that the more that this spreads, the more that this could cause infections in humans, um, which, you know, we don't want another pandemic <laughs> at all. I'm sure all of us mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll suck at that, Lisa. Uh, it, one thing that worries me about this story, Lisa, is uh, from what I've read, many farmers are very reluctant to agree to testing to see how prevalent it is. Um, what, is there anything that can be done to that? I mean, I, I suppose you can't really just force a farmer to, to take a test or, or have his, his uh, animals tested. Is there is there any sort of workaround for that? You know, I think we've seen in each week a new set of incentives trying to get the farmers to buy in to testing because you're right, it's very worrying because we don't actually know how widespread this outbreak is among dairy herds. We know, I think as of today, um, you know, that nine states have herds that have been infected, but it could be much more than that. Um, certainly when we see the data showing that there's, um, you know, bird flu, um, pieces of bird flu found in milk in states that don't have infections, it worries us. Um, you know, I think USD has been a little slow in how they rolled out some of the incentives. One of the things I think that could help is, you know, just making sure that farmers understand very clearly what happens after their, one of their cows tests positive. One of their worries is they don't know when they can go back to normal operations. And then there's a lot of um, hesitancy on the part of farm workers, which is very understandable. A lot of them don't get sick time. This is a largely migrant population um, that may be distrustful. They don't have health insurance, many of them. So there's a lot of challenges to overcome. And I think trying to find ways to draw people in to this process is the only <laughs> way that we're going to know, um, have a good handle on in real time on what's happening. Just to be clear, it's zoonic. It, it can jump from animals to humans. Uh, and then can it go from human to human transmission? Well, Right now, we don't have any evidence that's happening. And in fact, the good news, this is very good news, and we should focus on that piece to feel better, um, is that the two cases in humans we've seen in the US, one in Texas and one in Michigan, are both in dairy farm workers who their only symptom is a conjunctivitis. So likely what's happening is a cow is not breathing on them. They're not being exposed to cow snot. Um, cows are actually very snotty, I hear. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's they're getting this through exposure, likely from the milking equipment, um, because there is so much bird flu in yeah. the milk of infected cows. Um, but, you know, what? that's the thing we want to look for. When it gets easier for a human to be infected from a cow, when it gets easier for a human to infect another human. And that's why it's so important to have a handle on the you know, breadth of the outbreak and in real time where infections are happening. This time of year, I'm pretty snotty myself, so I can I can sympathize with the cows. We understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we, it's the allergy season. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, I was interested, though, there was a piece on the Bloomberg this week um, that shares of vaccine stocks that were moving on this. Apparently, um, Moderna shares were up, Pfizer shares were up. There was a report that companies are in talks with the U.S. government about the development of vaccines uh, for bird flu. Shares of CureVac, for example, they have a bird flu vaccine in early stage testing. What did you, is this just like meme stock hype or is this a real thing? <laughs> you know, I think investors are getting a little ahead of themselves. However, you know, um, Asper, which is the, the kind of part of HHS that, takes care of, you know, preparedness and, and manages our stockpiles, did say this week that they had moved um, the ingredients for making 4.8 doses of vaccines to a manufacturer and uh, to put those into vials so that we would have them just in case. Um, and that doesn't mean that even the just in case would be everybody. Probably if a just in case happened, it would be farm workers. Um, but um, they also said that they were in talks with Pfizer and Moderna. Now, the good thing about mRNA is that if the virus changed to more easily infect humans, um, it might be that the vaccine we have in our stockpiles isn't quite the right match in mRNA, as we know from the pandemic, allows some flexibility there. But I do think <laughs> folks are getting ahead of themselves um, and you know maybe getting excited that there could be a way to fill some of that capacity that no longer is making COVID vaccines.
You know, Lisa, I wonder, uh, obviously, for financial markets, inflation is such a big issue still, food inflation especially. Are we at risk of seeing a situation where massive amounts of cows or chickens are slaughtered uh, just to stop the spread of this virus? I don't think so. Um, well, certainly with poultry, that's kind of the dairy and poultry industries operate very differently. And poultry farmers are well, very familiar with bird flu, and they have a lot of biosecurity in place. And part of it, part of the reason they have biosecurity in, in place is that USDA has put a lot of, you know, kind of uh, rules around how they can be reimbursed um, in order to contain a bird flu outbreak. When it comes to the cattle, you know, so far infections are mild. And so um, I think what we need to understand is how long um, an outbreak will be disruptive in a particular herd. Um, it's sort of amazing to think about how many different states cows travel to, <laughs> dairy cows travel to in their lifetime. Um, and so, that I, I would, the only worry I think, and, and this is part of the reason farmers have not been participating in testing, to be honest with you, I think is that they can kind of create a backup. Um, but I don't think there's, right now, there's no reason to think that there's a risk to the food supply. Um, I think it's just more just thinking about that movement of cows and how to make sure that we can ensure that that continues to happen.